Hey guys, Keith from Kegland, and today we're talking about a new wrapped Bluetooth thermometer. Now, some people were probably thinking, wait a second, that's not new, I've already seen that. And correct, you've seen our old model, but we've just brought out a new model which is better and improved. So basically we've made some adjustments to the old model to further optimize the product to make it even better. So it still has a lot of the features of the old one. So uh, for instance, we use a high quality uh, stainless steel braided cable, but not only we have a braided cable, we also coat it in Teflon to make the whole cable and end waterproof. Now, that's not to say that the actual um, you know, this part is waterproof. So please don't dunk that, this into liquid. You can just dunk this whole cable and this piece. So basically this piece here can go into liquid. Um, it takes a couple uh, AAA batteries in the back, so that's pretty much the same. But we've made some improvements to the silicon backing on here to make it a little bit more useful when using it with the brewery and uh, random other stuff. We've optimized some of the firmware on the device to make it even better as well. And let me go into those features and show you how they work. I should say they also pair to things like our wrap devices. So if you've got a wrapped uh, brewery, so let's say for instance if you've got a Brusilla Gen 4 with the uh, wrapped functionality in there, you, you'll be able to pair this temperature controller with that brewery and therefore you'll be able to you know, essentially control the brewery turning on and off getting two temperature inputs. So not just the probe down the bottom, um, near the elements, but it also means you get a probe up the top in the core of the malt pipe, giving you those two temperature inputs, meaning you can hit those target temperatures much more effectively. You can also use this in conjunction with things like the wrap temperature control boxes as well, for instance, whereby um, you can use this as the control sensor rather than using this one on the temp control box. So um, that's another useful level of functionality if you need two temperatures for some reason. Uh, it also means that both of those temperatures will come up onto the graph uh, on, and, and be overlaid on the same graph in your wrapped portal when you log in online. Uh, with all your wrap devices in there. So um, yeah, a really useful device. I think with distillation, we're gonna see uh, a lot of these used as well because um, a lot of people in distillation wanna get multiple temperature inputs uh, and be able to check on that. Things like the, you know, the, the, the coolant water temperature, the top of the head of the still, um, you know, the, the, the temperature of where the spirit's coming out of the still and also um, things like the boiler temperature and so forth, with, which, which, which they wanna control. So having the uh, multiple uh, Bluetooth probes like this can make those processes uh, really much easier to keep track of. And we're in the process of coming out with some new stills in the future where I think these will be even more useful as well. So um, that'll help you enable, uh, enable you to automate a lot of the distillation process and really set a lot of alerts and alarms in case stuff goes wrong. So for instance, you know, let's say your coolant water is too hot or the spirit's coming out of the still too hot and you're losing too much in, in vapor. You know, things like that is uh, often go unmissed in distillation and then end up with bad results. But anyway, let's get stuck into the nitty gritty and let me show you this device and how it differs. Now the first thing we upgraded on the back of the Bluetooth controller is this silicon backing here. You can see how we've changed the shape quite a bit. Previously what we would have is a lot of people using the uh, Bluetooth thermometer, they would put it in here but then have nowhere to sort of put this, they'd put it rested on there or something then it would fall over or whatever. So we changed the silicon backing so you could basically use this piece of silicon here and actually hook it over the side of the boiler. It's a much more convenient location to put it. The other thing you can do is if you want an even more secure option is basically with this loop here, you can loop it on the lid clip. So basically you can go like that and that gives you an even more secure location to store it when you're using it with the Brazil, Brazil Brewery, for instance. So that has now been upgraded. I should say, I'll give you a sneak peek at these new lid clips, which are now adjustable. So now with these lid clips, these come standard on the Brazil 100 liter. But we're looking to also put these types of clips onto the 35 and 65 liter Brazil as well. It starts to become a bit more important if you've got really large distillation columns or large uh, you know, steam condensers and stuff like that because the lid is starting to pull a bit sideways and sometimes you need to apply a little bit for more force on some of the lid clamps to make sure that lid's really well held down. So these new adjustable lid clamps like that will go like this and then really hold that lid down uh, even more securely and give you a little bit of adjustment there.
Okay, so straight away what you can see is we've optimized the screen a little bit and actually made the contrast a bit darker so it's easier to read the numbers. The other thing we've done is change the whole firmware on the device. So we found a few ways where we could save a little bit more power, meaning that even with these fairly small um, you know, AAA batteries, if you get some good quality ones, you should be able to get over six months worth of a continuous battery usage. You can literally leave this on for six months and um, you know before the batteries run out. Uh, we've also got an auto turn off feature. Now on the previous model, it would automatically turn off on its own and you couldn't adjust that, but now you can adjust it. So I thought that was important, especially for people wanting to use this probe for a lengthy period of time or several days, for instance, or they just wanna make it stay on continuously. So to get into that mode, I'll just show you quickly how to do that. Once you've got the uh, unit turned on like this, just double click the button here. As you can see, it's 97 hours at the moment, meaning that after 97 hours, um, it's going to basically time out and automatically turn off. So it's going to basically not use any more battery after that 97 hours. So um, you can set that anywhere from zero to 99, or you can make it stay on continuously as well if you go slightly above 99. So I'll just show you how to do that. You basically click this, uh, you wake it up with a double click like that. 99, uh, 98, 99, and it, once it goes to strike, strike like that, if you're in strike, strike, that means stay on continuously. So for instance, I've actually doing, I'm actually doing some temperature logging at home. I'm temp temperature logging, I've got a greenhouse at home actually, and I'm logging the internal and external temperature of the greenhouse uh, and wanting to log both on the wrap portal. So, um, you know, what I'm doing is basically put, leaving this on, um, on strike strike. So it's continuously manage, uh, you know, monitoring the outdoor temperature, for instance, and reporting up to the web. The other thing I wanted to show you how to do, because some people are a bit confused in this, is how to change it from Celsius to Fahrenheit uh, on this new model as well. So if you want to do that, basically just remove the probe like this, so unplug that. And uh, if you unplug that, you'll see it gives me the error on the screen open. So that means open circuit. So, you know, you got something wrong with the probe. If the probe is plugged in, maybe you've damaged the wire or something like that, for instance, if you're getting the open circuit error. But you need to basically bring that error up on the screen while it's in this mode. Uh, once again, press the double click and then you can go into Celsius and Fahrenheit. So you can change just like that from to Fahrenheit or go back into Celsius. So um, that's pretty much it. So highly optimized the firmware as much as we possibly could to save battery and then made the you know screen better contrast and uh, you also got the extra timeout feature so you can adjust how long it times out. Well, hope you guys enjoy using the new Bluetooth wrapped temperature uh, probe. This is a really useful device for all sorts of different applications. Uh, I should also say, even though we've changed the silicon backing, we've still got the magnet in here like the old ones do as well. Obviously it doesn't work on stainless steel because stainless steel's uh, non-magnetic, so it won't work on our Brazilla breweries, for instance. However, if you've got something steel like on your fridge door, obviously you can just stick it to your fridge door like that. So I haven't changed that magnet in the back. Um, yeah, and that is pretty much it. So if you want to hear about any of the other cool stuff that's coming up, definitely subscribe to this uh, video uh, channel now, bottom right hand corner, hit subscribe, and join our homebrew community group where we're sharing lots of tips and tricks on how to get the most out of all our gear. And we listen to you guys. So if you've got any ideas on stuff that you want manufactured and uh, you know, you've got a cool idea for a product that you think would be great or make the brewing process even easier or more automated, definitely let us know. So join the group and jump in on that conversation. All right, thanks for that and talk to you guys next time. Bye.